Good morning, everybody. It has been a couple weeks, but we are back at this deck job for just one day doing some punch list stuff. Um, I'm going to probably check in a couple times throughout the day, kind of show you what we got going on. Uh, one of the main things is going to be changing or some lighting type stuff. The ceiling fans have come in, so we'll be able to put those up. And then we're also going to swap out these can lights to black trim rings with a normal light bulb instead of these normal um, complete retrofit kits that we use here. Just because we think it'll look better on this ceiling. Uh, with it. We got black black everything else. It's going to be black railings down here. We got the black lantern up there. Obviously black you know chairs and stuff. We got the white the white PVC, some white PVC here but I think the black the black lights will look a little bit better. And then what I'm working on right now is some details on these column wraps. So these are these were pre-made column wraps that I glued together and you can possibly see how sharp these corners are. Like they're they're very nice sharp corners and like they can literally cut you if you rub against them too hard. So what I am doing, and I just did it on that one over there, but all I'm doing is taking this nice round screwdriver and literally just rubbing it like this up and down a little bit and it softens that edge really nice and i know this is probably not showing up on camera very well because of the lighting but hopefully you can kind of see all it's doing is just smoothing that and give it a nice nice round over so not only does it look better but it's quite literally safer <laughs> so you don't risk cutting yourself if you bump up against one of these things Okay, so I finished all of the rounding overs of the corners and here's your helpful trick for the day when it comes to fixing dents in PVC. My brother told us this going into this job and I don't know, I guess he learned it recently because we've been doing PVC you know, trim on X-Series like this for years and I'd never heard this before. I just made this pretty noticeable scratch. My screwdriver just slipped off the edge right there and he told us that if that ever happens, grab our heat gun, and you could probably use it with a hair dryer, but I'm using my heat gun because it's a little bit faster. Fire the heat gun up. And just like that, the heat expands the PVC back out. So it literally in five seconds made that huge scratch go away, which is insanely helpful because there's plenty of times where you accidentally bump it you know it can be something as simple as like this five-in-one tool that's in my pocket like if i lean up against this column like that i could scratch it dent it whatever that's a pretty helpful hint to have in your back pocket for when you're working with stuff like that because we're not planning on painting any of this it's it's pvc it doesn't need to be painted to protect it um it's just a cellular pvc that is perfectly fine left as is so if that helps, if that's of any help to any of you guys, uh, that's awesome because it's very helpful for me. So thanks, bro, for finding that out on probably the internet somewhere, probably one of our one of the forums we're on or something. All right, it's the end of the day. Quick check-in. So we got um, my guy Matt did our did our high heat paint on the the fire brick inside here, so that all looks really good now. It's not quite as bright and shiny uh, in real life as the camera makes it look, and it'll dry down a little bit more too once it's actually fully dry. But that looks really good, and we're still waiting on the hearth to come in as well. But we got the base of the fireplace line all cleaned up, as well as up at the top, so that all looks really good. We got the new black trim kits installed, or trim rings. Got the ceiling fans. It's coming together. And we also obviously pulled up all of the RAM boards so you can finally see what this deck actually looks like. We are still waiting on some more plugs to finish. We ran out, uh, so we're still waiting on a few more to finish this board and the one tread on the stairs, but you can see the overall finished look now and it looks so good got that last tread board done so now we're just waiting on the railings go in um, next Monday it's a Tuesday right now railings go in next Monday and then final inspection day after 
and then next Friday, so about a week and a half from now, uh, we are gonna be back to do the TV and the mantle and a little bit more grading and some backfill and that kind of stuff to actually finish this thing up. All right, guys, it is a few months later, but we are back because this deck is finally complete. I wasn't actually here for the very last day. Uh, one of our other crews was here wrapping up a couple things because I was busy on another job, so I wasn't here to finish it up. But we had a lot of a lot of issues along the way in the home stretch, but we got them all sorted out. So here is the big drone shot reveal, and then I'll be back in a second and give you the the rest of the tour. So as you can clearly see by all of the Christmas decorations, it is, in fact, I honestly don't remember. It's quite a few months after the last time I was here. Uh, it is early December now. Christmas decorations in place everywhere. So it looks really, really cool in here. Show you around a little bit. So there's a lot of things that haven't changed a ton since the last time we were here. Uh, I don't think we had the hearthstone in place last time we were here but that was uh that was a whole lot of fun to get in place it's a two inch thick blue stone and we actually had to borrow a pretty sizable torch because we had to cut it to length and so this whole side right here was just you know smooth from us cutting it with the saw and we actually had to do what's called thermal edging which is essentially soaking the edge of the material and then hitting it with a torch that is adjusted properly and it actually blows out the face of the material like that to replicate the, the way the rest of it looked. So that was a first and it ended up looking pretty awesome, I think. And uh, I don't think we had the mantle up last time either. I'm going off memory. I don't remember what was in the rest of this video because I edited it a little while back and then never came back to finish it. So uh, you'll have to forgive me if I'm, you know, repeating things that you've already seen in the first part of this video. But here's the mantle. Uh, it is the same material with the same stain and finish as the timber truss up there. And it all matches so good. They, of course, also got some uh, some new deck furniture as well. I think I did say the railings were the one thing that we, the one big thing that we had been waiting on. And those, we had a lot of problems with them. They're finally done now and they look awesome. Uh, it was not a painless process at all. Uh, so that was unfortunate, but they're on, they look really good. You know, just powder coated black metal railings everywhere. And it looks super good. We've never, we've never done one of our deck systems and had another company come in and do these metal railings before, but I like it, it looks pretty good. It looks really good on the stairs too. There's a few different people around running leaf blowers, so that's what that noise in the background is, if you can hear it, which I'm sure you can. Um, but the one other thing I wanted to do while I was here, uh, blown away by the amount of people who've watched these videos for one. So if you're, if you you come back, you're this is part seven, I think. If you're you've been here for all of them, thank you so much for watching all these videos. I had no idea they were gonna blow up the way they did, which I mean, for some people is nothing, but for so for a little channel like mine, it's pretty crazy to see how many views this series has gotten. Um, but some people asked questions on some of the videos and I tried to answer them uh, as best I could in the comments on the individual video where the question was asked. But while I'm here, I was gonna go ahead and point out a couple things to try and answer some of the questions a little bit more thoroughly. Um, so one question was how we attach or how we uh, tied in the roof to the siding uh, up, you know, obviously up on the roof line. So you can see here in this drone shot, you, it's, you know, you can see as, as good as you can see in the drone shot that there's that black, it's just the flashing that the roofers put in. We cut the siding 
two inches higher than where the shingle line is gonna be, and that allows the roofers to slip their flashing up underneath of that siding, and it keeps the siding up off of the deck so that it doesn't, or uh, excuse me, it keeps the siding up off their shingles so that that cut edge of the siding doesn't stay wet, it can dry out, it won't collect as much junk as if it's you know tight down to the shingles. One of the other things was how we attached posts, like the support posts that are holding the, up both the deck and the roof. Um, those are all currently covered up, obviously. So there are ones, there are, there are ones down here. These posts, well for one, if, you, you can, if you've seen in any of the wide shots, these posts, do not continue all the way down to the ground. You can see there is another post there, but this post right here, for example, is sitting on top of another post because this would have to be like a 20 foot tall post if we did, or a 16 foot tall post if we did that. Um, so there is a bracket down here that this post is sitting in, and I'll put in a picture of it right here. It's just a simple basically a U bracket that's code approved for a fastening down on top of the framing that's there. And then you fasten, you set the post inside of it and you fasten the post to it. And then similar ones up top, slightly different. And those are on that corner post and this one. And then that post over there as well. There is no post, any more post on that side. Those uh, ties look like this. It's kind of like a twisted, kind of like a twisted U shape that gets nailed to both the beam that's supported, supporting the roof and also the post that is supporting the beam. Both of those are, you know, of course, code approved for what we're using them for. All right, so I'm under the deck now. Uh, there were a few questions regarding the posts contacting the ground and why we had to break up the concrete slab instead of just setting our own posts on it. So I'm gonna cover a couple of those things. The first question was why it was okay for the posts like this one that are going down into the ground to actually be contacting the ground. And that's because if you actually look, and there there probably aren't any, there won't be any on here, but if you're looking at normal pressure treated lumber like this two by four right here and these one by fours and one by sixes, there's gonna be a sticker on the end of them that says not for ground contact or for above ground use or for something like that. That's because while they are treated with a copper based one of a few different copper based um, compounds in order to prolong the life of the wood they're not strong enough to withstand being in constant contact or actually underneath of the ground however support posts like four by fours and six by sixes have double the amount of chemical in them so they are able to be you know buried in the ground or resting on the ground so on and so forth so that's why it's okay that these posts are going down into the ground and they're going down to the ground about almost two feet to land on the concrete footers that you saw us pour in the first episode and like we did like up here of course we uh, we came back and after we uh, backfilled the holes and everything we put new concrete in so that it would look nice and of course now that all of the waterproofing under here is done they're able to store bikes and lawn equipment and stuff like that under here and stays dry and i don't know if i actually ever showed the entire drainage system but the those are of course all that black stuff is those waterproof bladders that come down and they land in that gutter which is sloping you know almost touching the joist up there on the high side sloping all the way down to hanging down from the joist quite a bit there. And then it just goes into a downspout and drains out underneath the deck. But the water more or less will just flow, the water will just flow down these channels and then it hits this little backstop piece basically, which just empties into the gutter. So these little short pieces are, literally they're called baffles. They're just there to catch the water so it doesn't shoot past the gutter. Oh, and uh, one other thing regarding why we had to do the posts or why we had to dig the hole so deep and actually pour concrete instead of using normal footing blocks like we do is this area of the, this particular neighborhood specifically has what's called shrink swell soil, which we run into occasionally around here. And the, the, the quick version is that it's soil that is more prone to swell drastically when wet and shrink drastically when dry as opposed to normal soil. So when that happens, you have to actually dig farther down and get 
you just have to dig farther down and pour bigger concrete footings versus using a pre-made concrete footing block like we do um, for a lot of other things. And so that's why we had to dig such big holes. But the auger came in really handy for that and we actually bought an auger on our last job. So now we have one for whenever we need to use it, which is pretty awesome because it is a lifesaver. But I think that actually answers all of the questions that people had asked so far. I will obviously continue to answer any more questions that get asked on the videos going forward. Uh, I won't be coming back here <laughs> to point anything, any more things out, but hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you guys may have. But that's pretty much it. This is it. Everything still looks really, really nice. It's, it's pretty chilly out here today. We're actually supposed to get our first snow of the season potentially tonight, so. That'd be pretty nice. This would be a pretty nice place to uh, sit and watch the snow fall, if you ask me. But that is going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this entire series. This has been a pretty long one. Definitely the longest video series I've had on this channel up to date. Uh, for anybody who this is the first video or this series is the first one you've ever watched, um, on my channel there's actually called a work, I think it's work renovations playlist or work or work my real job or something like that there's a there's a playlist on my channel that has videos that are all you know projects we've done at work there's a couple interior remodels there's a couple bathrooms um there might be i don't think there's any more decks on there but we're we're actually doing a deck in the same neighborhood as this house right now about a minute up the road which is one of the reasons why i was able to easily swing back over here and wrap up this series but if you've enjoyed this, uh, I would invite you to check out some of the other stuff. Uh, it's not, I've grown a little bit over <laughs> my uh, two years of this channel, so some of the older videos are maybe not quite as, quite as awesome and epic as this project was, but we still do a lot of fun things. And, uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I've spent enough time talking, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm actually going to link my work Instagram in the disc channel description so you can follow. We just recently hired a social media manager uh, to, who's uh, kind of overhauling our, our work social media channel. So I'm going to go ahead and link that Instagram down in the description. I will link my Instagram as well. I'm not super active on there all the time. I try to be, but sometimes I forget to post for you know a month or two at a time. But I will link both of those Instagrams down in the description and feel free to come check out more of what the kind of stuff we've done and i will see you guys next time thanks so much